What I didn't want to do is become famous. You've absolutely sent it on all levels. Small town girl from Adelaide, loves fitness, becomes this personal trainer, goes on to build the world's biggest fitness app and sells it. And then now podcast has completely pivoted because you've just bought it back 48 hours ago. It's always been the customer and the client's ideas. And then we've just built upon that. The gym for females is super intimidating, especially because back in the day, there was a men's section and there was a women's section. And they made that very clear. Subscription is Business is normal. Back then, we got the most hate for three ninety nine per week. Like it was outrageous. The men that you attract are jealous and they're weak and they can't handle your success. Business is not just glam and driving around in Ferraris. Like it's hard and it, like you have rough days and that person needs to be able to support you and be proud of you. It must have been hard over the three years for you to deal with the fact that your name's attached to something you cannot control. Like I could not be happier. No one jinx me, but I feel so happy with what's going on. Welcome to the Frankie Lee podcast. Are we? Are we? Frankie are we? has been trying to get me on the podcast <laughs> for how many years? Well, I'd say probably about three years. And I would have gone on the podcast if you had not been. I'm leaving. I'm leaving this intro. I'm. I'm leaving this intro. <laughs> If you had the proper dietary requirements required to go to dinner with Jay and I that night, but we did not have that. So we delayed the podcast until you were forgiven. This is today. Kayla Ritzinas, welcome to the podcast. I mean, what an intro that is. You've done your own intro there. You didn't even let me get off the- uh... I think we should talk about- the, the night that we had with Frankie to start the podcast. You want, you, you, you seriously want to start so a podcast like, all night? We wanted, Jay and I were so excited to see Frankie, we wanted to go to dinner with him and Frankie came with like a list of things that he did not want to eat. So we were like, that's fine, Frankie. What do you want to eat? And what did you say? Meat? Meat. Oh, I said, fine. We'll go to Hellenica, a beautiful Greek restaurant in Brisbane. We get there. Frankie orders fish. I don't know what Frankie thought that fish would be, but it came <laughs> out and it looked delicious. And Frankie proceeded to scrape off every bit of herb and spice on this fish. <laughs> and what, did you even eat it? No. Yeah, no, I ate the fish. And he ate the potato chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just said, no, Frankie, no more dinners. And, but here we are, podcast. And, and ever since that day, you've uh, you've you've blacklisted me from, blacklisted from, from friendships, podcasts, dinners, from even talking to bunches. me. You build other people's podcasts because you, you because you thought that was a suitable punishment for for the for the, for the diabolical behaviour of me not eating the fish. I mean, to to say that our relationship has been t- uh, turmoil for for quite a number of years because of this fish tobacco is is honestly quite quite harsh. To us. But let's let, let's do a proper introduction. Kerrison is known as one of the biggest personal trainers in the world. I I'm not going to use the term that you hate as fitness influencer because you know I know actually you, I appreciate that because I, I I do I, I do my research. I you know in our friendship you know I don't throw people under buses at the start of podcasts. You know you've uh you you've you've absolutely sent it on all levels. So let's just run the backstory. Small small town girl from Adelaide, grows up Greek family, in Australia. Loves fitness, becomes this personal trainer, goes on to build one of the biggest, world's biggest uh, fitness apps and sells it. And then now the podcast has completely pivoted because you've just bought it back 48 hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> so to te- so even my research just goes completely out of the wall. So honestly, like, let's just, let's just bring it back. The world is not sure of people that look like they're inspiring women on the on the on the outside but then have a little substance at the back end but you i know with your family values have absolutely sent it on all levels and i just want to give people a bit of context is into your life growing up and why you even got into fitness and what was your your passion behind that firstly i appreciate that i appreciate you've done your research because yes i do not enjoy being called a fitness influencer i like being called a personal trainer so i thank you for that my background into fitness was I, I don't actually have like a sob story for it. Like I don't have a sad story. I always loved training. I love sport. I trained, I played basketball during high school. I became a basketball coach. And then I went into a university to be a PE teacher and then took a gap year to do personal training, loved personal training, never went back to teaching. Like I literally fell in love with being able to change women's lives. And I went straight into women's only personal training, which was cool. I've never actually trained a guy. What, what, what was your reason 
being women's only because obviously like you wanted to see people get fit but what was what was the women's only thing what, what was that well i started off doing um what it was just it was just the career i guess i fell into it was a women's only um mobile personal training women's only training center i don't know it must have just been like what i fell into and, and for a reason and then um, I did training uh, from home and I had a lot of clients for religious reasons that didn't, that couldn't train around men. And I loved my clients so much. And these clients that they had were so beautiful. They would bring me food. They were like, they made me feel like family, even though I had a huge family. I was like, I love this culture and I love, like, I love them so much. I just stick, stuck with women only. And then I just, from there, it just women only do you, do you think that was because more of your greek background this family background that you've got I've, i know because since i've met your mom and all your family at the back end i know how like you all live within this little postcode it, like, within two or three streets I'd i say. do have something surprising to tell you in a second yeah but, but are you well you move you move in states <laughs> yeah okay well we'll, 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 we'll just temporarily guys. we're just temporary but but you know with that family environment that you come from being a greek family it's it, it, it's it's no wonder why you wanted to have this small community stuff but if you've got this small community of women that you're training, what what possessed you then to pivot that small community into into the massive community that that it is today? I honestly think it was the shift from being just a personal trainer to uploading my clients on social media, and then social media growing to more than Adelaide, so it was Australian wide. And then I would have people from Melbourne and Sydney, Perth, message me saying, "Would you be able to train me?" I said, "No," but if you, I used to have a copy and pasted response. I would say to them, "Say." I'm so sorry, but if you're ever in Adelaide, here's my phone number. Here's my address that I train out of. Like, please contact me anytime you're in Adelaide. And then it was, okay, maybe putting together a program that they can do at home. So it was sort of like, oh, here are a few exercises or here's a few nutritional tips. So just copy and paste from notes literally on your phone to these people. And then it was, okay, maybe do a guide and then maybe put it online and maybe no one will buy it and maybe no one will be interested. But then it wasn't that. It was a guide, which was 12 weeks that went online, a really bad website that broke um, many times, but it went online nonetheless. People did the guide. They loved the guide. They sent in these transformation photos and it just grew and grew and grew. And then there was this request for it becoming an app. That app went crazy in like almost the worst way possible because again, it crashed. Like we weren't ready for it. And then it became the most amazing community building app basically in the world for women, which was incredible. And we are like, we were from Adelaide. It's, 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 it's great to see your face light up as you tell a story. Cause to you, it's like, it seems like there's just these three steps and then you just, you're there and you, don't, <laughs> and you don't know how you got there. And it sounds also simple, but let's, let's strip it way back. I mean, you started off with a, with a PDF guide. I mean, whose suggestion was it to put it into a PDF guide in, in the first place? Was that, was, that, was that kind of clients asking for you to put it into 100%. A- like it was, it's always been the customer and the client's ideas and then we've just built upon that. So at, initially it was me just trading the clients and then them asking for things and me just like executing it on what they want. And that's how we grew so fast because we were listening to what the clientele and what the customers wanted. We want this type of training. Like we want more trainers. We want more weeks at it. And it was always, that's why you stay in there. When you stay in that community, that's when you grow. When you step back and you ask workers to go in, in and do it and you're not actually paying attention to what your clients want and need, that's when it fails. I think one of the reasons you've you've gone through this whole journey and got to like 15, 16 million people on just Instagram alone is because obviously you 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 had a set of morals from the start that you wouldn't go over the line with. Like one of the one of the one of the things I've heard you say before is that you'd never sexualize the content to kind of sell to sell fitness right. programs, and if you look at any other person in your space, they've always sometimes gone over that line to to sell products. You've never represented, as far as I, as far as I'm aware, a, a, another brand. You've never pushed all other stuff. You'll you'll, pr- you'll promote other stuff that you use yourself or your family uses, but you don't go and promote products. Like, how did you align these guidelines with you from such an early stage and such an early start? I have absolutely, honestly, I don't know. I, I, I knew that what I didn't want to do is become famous. And I know this sounds super weird, but I was like, I don't want to be the center of attention. And I used to, and I don't know if anyone's listening to this or and, and seeing this right now, if you remember my first initial photos, they always covered my face. So I always had the phone over my face and everyone's like, why don't you like your face? I'm like, no, I just don't want you to know who I am. Like, it's not about me. Like it's my training and whatever, but it was more about my clients. And so the first thing I was like, hey, I don't want to be like super famous and known for for being me. So I will put the like um, emphasis and the highlights on my clients. 
And um, so the first thing was not sexualizing myself because I thought even automatically if you sexualize yourself, you're the center of attention. Then promoting things that I don't believe in was another one, like being like, here, buy this water that like someone paid me to do. I never wanted to do that because it was just fake. Um, I always wanted to, you know, remain humble in, in a way that was, that would mean looking, that would look like something like being around my family a lot and, and not letting it get to my head and then remaining in Australia because I felt like that was something that grounded me. But that was like some of the, some of the stuff that I stuck to. I'm sure there's more things that I sure will remember them, but yeah, I just, I was like, all right, this is it and I'll go from there. So it's essentially the family values that, that set how you've approached your whole business. Yes. Yeah. And then it was when I was a trainer, I realized that when I had my clients, a lot of my clients, they didn't have family. So like I was all they had or like the people that they trained with in a group that they didn't even know was all they had. They didn't have family. And I wanted people to have what I had, which was this like sense of just like, I don't know, family and, and love and like, yeah, it was really sad. What, what, was, what was sad? Realizing that they don't have anyone. Like, yeah. especially when I went to, over to like New York, people in New York, there's no one, there's, it's rare that you've grown up in New York. So they were all from like other places, like either working there away from family or studying there and they had no one. And like the community was all that they had. It was, it was, it was hard. I mean, I think one of the things that makes your content so easily digestible for people is that they didn't have to go to the gym Correct. in the early days. I think there's a lot of. I didn't realize this until I've spoken to a few women on this podcast and other women outside of this podcast that how intimidating the gym is to a female. Like, could, on, you, could, could, could you walk walk me through? Like, was that been? Is it ever been intimidating to you? Or? Oh yeah, like the gym. The gym for females is super intimidating, especially because back in the day, I'm going to say like back in the day, make myself sound old, but like let's say like 15 years ago, there was like a clear. And it's going to sound really bad right now as I say this, but there was a men's section and there was a women's section. And they made that very clear. Like even the trainers were like, the cardio, it sounds like, I I hate saying it out loud, but it was like the cardio equipment's for like the women. And then like, that's the boys gym and the men's section. And like, you didn't want to go into the men's section. If you did go into the men's section, you're wearing like your boyfriend's like oversized tee. There was no like amazing gym clothes that made you feel like awesome while you were training. There was no gym brands. It was just like oversized Nike t-shirts, boyfriend t-shirts, and then like, when you went to the gym, again, this sounds crazy, but like people would be like, what's wrong? Like, why are you going to the gym? Like, you, it wasn't like, yeah, oh, yeah, you yeah. get to go to the gym. Like right now, it's like, I'm going to the gym. Oh, cool. I'll come with you. Like if a female said back in the day, like I'm going to the gym, they're like, are you okay? Like I mean, that's 15 years ago. It's it's mental to me how many brands have been built on the back of, of fitness in the gym now, because obviously like all the clothing you see and every everything brand. is around the gym culture. So now like it should be less intimidating. I mean, it's not. There are there are people in there lifting very heavy weights and making a lot of noise. And if you've never been in the gym before and all you see is a sea of metal, then yeah, it's going to be intimidating. It's going to be intimidating no matter where you go if you don't know where you are. What did you find out your your kind of like ideal profile client was at the time? Like, was it was it the 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 thirty five to forty year old your newly mum or what, what was what was it what was it back in the day? I think I've grown with my community. So the age that I was at when I started was around eighteen, and I think that was eighteen to twenty five, and then it was like. And then I don't, I don't feel like people who had kids took me seriously. They used to say like, you just wait till you have a kid and then it won't be the same. And then I had Anna and then everything changed and then my community grew and then how uh, res- respected I was, I think grew. And then I was taken more seriously. And I think I, I, as I stuck to my morals and I had my kids and I, I've had this like whole full circle journey, I think I'm now respected in the industry as someone who one, like loves that type of training, but two is there for women and three can show women that they can do it even after they have kids. It's, it's, it's interesting as well because I know it's from being around you personally and from us going to dinner, obviously, with, with Jay, your partner, um, back in Australia. One, one, I don't think you give yourself any credit as an entrepreneur. And two, I I, I really realised when we were sat at dinner how on point you are with, with branding, with aesthetics and how things line up. And I realised that must have been the part of the business that you owned because when I look back at those early guides, even the colour schemes, how they sit, for the time that they're in, yeah. For the time that they're in, <laughs> they're, 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 for the time oh, no. for the time that they're in, though, they're they're incredibly well branded and incredibly well put together. So, like, talk me into like how you got your eye for for this branding and how you knew about all the color palettes and everything like that. Because because you say you say you're just going to tell me, oh, it's by accident. It can't be. Like you you've got a real eye for this detail. Where where did you where did you get that from? I like I couldn't tell you, Frankie. <laughs> 
<laughs> no. Yeah, no, no, I just feel like I just feel like some things just come naturally to some people. Some like I think I can I can be Keller at Zenas and I can also step out and be the client. Like I can see what the client wants and I can see uh, what they want it to look like and I can simplify something. Like mm. whereas when you're building a product because you're working on a product day in and day out, you could make the product look and feel super complicated, but to you it would be really easy because you built it and you're working on it every single day. Whereas I have the ability to step back, strip it back, being like, okay, let's look at this. Like I've never seen it before. What would someone want to see or have to see for this to be easy for them? And I think that's what my brain does. Yeah. So when it comes to colors, I was like pink and blue. So you can see these, this is one circuit and this is another circuit. Like I need to make it easy. I need to say that it's seven minutes. Here are the exercises. Here are the reps. And what seems really self-explanatory you actually need to do and you need to break it down with someone and I always say I know this sounds really bad but I always say if like a kid can't understand it don't do it yeah like you need to really break it down because people listen but they don't really listen see it was hard for me to take at the time you so told me a few solid things about where I was going wrong at the at that particular time and don't get me wrong I'm not, as I do because we're friends I, I do this to normal I, I, people I, I, no, no, like, no 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 but I want to I give people an insight because I think it's I had never looked at it like the way that you're teaching me look at it I think it's valuable for this audience to understand the way that you look at it it's like you you put me against other other things and said look does this look right to you and, and when you when you hold it up in plain sight it, it's clear to see so I would just suggest that anyone who listens to this podcast if they've got a, whatever your brand is there's going to be um, people out there that are probably doing it better than you, I would just suggest that you put your brand against someone else's brand and kind of look look to see the the differences in that. And I think the difference we clearly understood, but there was no brand guidelines around what I was producing at the time. So the aesthetics weren't right and the, the lighting was off and, the, and, and everything was off and you just handed it to me. And, and, <laughs> and it's it's hard for me to say that, but it's, it's the truth. You handed me my ass and like, this is not good enough. You've got to level up. You've got to, you've got to move on. Like, And it's hard to take that, but it's what you said to me, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. Look, I, I feel like I, I need, Frankie asked me and I was like, okay, but like, I remember the conversation, I'm like, this is going to be brutal. Like, are you okay with brutal? Cause I just give it to you like exactly like it is. And he was like, yeah, it's fine. So I was like, okay, this doesn't look good. This doesn't look good. This doesn't make sense. You need to be doing this. I think you should do this. Have a look at this. This made sense to me. This was really easy to understand. Like we went through it at a dinner and like, I feel like you just nailed it. We, it's, it, it's, no, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not nailed. I'm trying to get 1% better every day. But, 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 but the preface of what, why I wanted to say that on here and why I'm open about that is because like you, uh, anyone that's listening to this, you can't see what you can't see. You need to align your, you need to align yourself with someone else's brand so you can kind of see where you're set up off with. And you got to have someone like you that will, that will flick you the honest truth about where they're at. Because otherwise, if you haven't got people like that in your life, you're kind of struggling, aren't you, to, to um, uh, bat, battling uphill. And I just think the branding thing is, is something you've nailed. When you're selling PDF information, highly profitable, really easy to spin, highly reputable, wicked cash flow model right then you go someone suggests you build an app and you go yeah let's build an app but did you understand the costs in building an app when you first started that no and like whenever you build an app like buy it right or buy it twice like that is legit like you build an app and you try and you try and save costs you try and do like you know as cheap as possible but if you want to be legit you need to build something that is solid and that's not something that we did we did something that like we just sort of not threw it together. Like I don't want to say threw it together. We put a lot of time and effort into it, but like we had no idea about apps and no idea about subscription apps. So like it was so hard moving from single purchase to subscription. That was one thing. And then it was that PDF was so easy. Sent, done, you get it. The app was like loading in information. You know, here's people didn't know how to use it. We were one of the first people to change over to subscription. And by the way, guys, as a side note, subscription business is normal back then we got the most hate for 3.99 per week it was like we had like murdered someone's mom like it was outrageous like they were like how could you do this it's so expensive i'm like but you're paying the same amount for a 12-week guide you're now getting 200 weeks and you're trying to justify you're trying to explain it back in the day it was so hard and like so it takes a mental toll and then yeah like we you can ask you a question. We had no bloody idea how hard it was going to be. Did you feel like, because you were the f like one of the first subscription fitness apps at that time, did you feel like you had to go ahead and educate the market on subscriptions oh, in that space? I was constantly defending subscription. I was like yeah. trying to say, but if you train with me, like it will cost you X amount of money and you get it for like this much of the cost, but you won't do it. Like what I, I was, 
I was, I just, and I remember my team pulling me aside and like, stop, like the app is good. Like you're doing good. Like it's a minority of people that are say that it's too expensive and they won't buy it. They, they will just complain, but they won't actually buy it. I'm like, okay. I just care so much. When you're building in that, in, in those initial days, you, 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 I know you were personally thinking about servicing more clients, getting in some, getting, helping more people, going out to this as well. But was any part of you also thinking from a business point of view that as a subscription model, it's worth more on an exit than, than, than no. anything like that? No, my honest answer is no. So, so my, my, my brain and the mental space back when I was younger was just trying to get from the PDF to the app with no intention or thought of exiting the business. Like it's when it, when it's your first business, it's your baby. And when you're the face, you love it. You have no intention of an exit. And if you do, it's you need to align yourself with the absolute right people. So at the time, my goal was PDF to app. That was it. That's all. I, and, and I was the face and I was in front of the media and if anything went wrong it was me and I took it I did the boot camps and I that was me I was same content how have you never put money because I've known you for a long time now you never put money as um a key metric to drive toward right you you always you always worried about the aesthetics or serving more people or this and the other so uh, there's a lot of people that start businesses or start anything in life and they want to drive towards the money in the fastest route possible how it, do you think by divorcing yourself from thinking about the money, do you think do you find that's helped you more? Yeah, it, yes, a hundred percent. But but the thing is that that's in the rare case that you have a business partner that is able to handle the side that is money. Right. If you're by yourself, you have to. Of course, you have to. But I chose to operate on this fifty percent of the business, and I was, and I still am very good at that fifty percent. And I continue to drive money or people through that passion on that side that side would have ruined me both sides together and i and, and i give so much credit to people who run businesses solely by themselves that have to handle content marketing understanding their consumer and then money where's it going business growth working on the business versus working in the business like it's two very different things so if you're doing both you're amazing for me i only had one side quick one for you guys this podcast is sponsored by contentremover.com as many of you are probably aware I set up contentremoval.com in 2017 to help people remove all forms of online content. And I've looked after some of the biggest names and brands in the world doing it. And I would love to help you if you're struggling. If you're struggling to remove images, videos, search results, fake accounts, or anything online, go to contentremoval.com and we'll help you today. Do you think it was helpful then having a business partner at the time that could, that, where your skills were clearly opposite? Yes, right? absolutely. So you look at, any businesses, most businesses that are doing well, they have two owners and they're both the complete polar opposite person. Like I would love to see people write into this or comment underneath this, like wh which person they are. You're either that real money business driven person, business mind, very logical, or you are the emotional one, the one that is like the face of the business, the one that can understand the consumer that, that is like everyone's best friend. It's hard to be both. So when you, so when you're when you're the numbers person at the back end, is that numbers person then asking you for insights into what you think the customer wants so that they can uh, go yeah, and drive definitely. it? These people work together. So like and again, any business, you always cross over and you always work together. So what what are they asking for? Works? Well, how much is that going to cost? Like you can't just can't I can't just put my hand up and say I want to do a world tour. Like that's going to cost money. There's flights. There's audio. There's there's stages. There's there's lighting. There's actually getting people in security. Like. There's got to be someone in there that does the other side. I just can't imagine you wanting to have ever left Australia unless someone else had said to you, you've got to do a world tour or you, you've got to do something. Uh, like look, I, I'm... You're a home girl. I, I love Australia so much. I think it is the most beautiful place to live at the moment. I'm in Adelaide, but we're actually doing a 12-month stint in Gold Coast. So, you, so, you, so, you, so, yeah. so what, what made you pivot to the Gold Coast for you? Honestly, just like the opportunity for wet the lifestyle that's there it's only two hours away from Adelaide by plane my family is, is so excited because they have a place to go to and Adelaide's freezing cold and they need somewhere warm I've known for a long time that you you were always torn between going to Brisbane or the Gold Coast and having lived in the Gold Coast for eight years at the time 
I don't know how you could ever live in Brisbane, to be honest. Like, yeah, that's literally but, but, what but, everyone says, and that is what it was. It was literally asking people. We spent so much time in Brisbane. We spent time in the Gold Coast, and I was asking people which one they would prefer, and everyone's like, oh, you look, the gold, the people that would say to me, and this is like just off the topic, by the way, but they were like, you know, we were in Brisbane, and then the Gold Coast, we were there for the weekend, and I was thinking they're only in Brisbane because they work there, and then they drive to the Gold Coast to have their, like, uh, live their lifestyle, their like, and then they're back to work. But then I'm like, okay, maybe it's not like that. Maybe there are people who just love Brisbane. But anyway, I get to find out because Brisbane and the Gold Coast are like 45 minute drive between. And and, yeah, and obviously, like the Gold Coast smashes Brisbane to pieces. Oh, stop! Okay, listen. It, it's <laughs> uh, and uh, can I remind you of the conversations where you were trying to tell me that you were going to live in Brisbane at the Brisbane time? Brisbane has the best food, far superior to GC. Well, I'm so sorry, GC well, people, but I would rather drive there for a meal than than live there. Fair enough. Like, come on, like, be, be serious. Okay, I don't, we're going to cause, you're going to cause a GC in Brisbane. Battle. Battle. Uh, look, I, if I, I if I that. didn't have to go around the world trying to grow my podcast and move things forward, I would just live in the Gold Coast as well because the Gold Coast is better. And for, and for someone like you who's creating content, you know, branding, all that stuff, it's kind of, it's perfectly aligned for the, for the chapter of your life and for the children as well. Absolutely. Like, but how have you balanced being a, a mum to Anna, a mum to Jax with everything you're trying to do on the, on the other side of it? Like, I will never lie about this. And I've answered this honestly in every single person that's asked me. I have help, so much help, like more than anyone could ever want, need, ask for. I have my mum. I've got Jay's mum who lives behind us. I've got Jay's sister who lives four houses away. My sister who lives on the next street. Like I have had in the hardest part, which is the newborn stage, every single person at my disposal. My grandparents live down the street. Like the hardest part's over now. Obviously the first year is, is over now. Um, but yeah, I'm never going to say that, oh, you know, it's so hard juggling because if I, I can call my sister, she'll be over in two seconds. That actually happened the other day. I was trying to do my mum's makeup while holding Jack's. Arna's pulling on me and I rang my sister. I was like, can you just run over here and just look after the kids while I do mum's makeup for this wedding? She was like, yep, no worries. Surely during, you know, because Arna came came first and she's she's been, you know, she's a beautiful little little soul, like credible character, you know. She's, she's going to, she, 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 she's demanding, I'd say, because she's, she she's like her mum. And, you know, just get that in there. <laughs> and, you know, she's, she is demanding, like you know. She's, good. Yeah, she's, 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 she's demanding, right. and she's got a hell of a personality. I've spoken to her. I've spoken to her on Facetime. Like she's, yeah. she's, 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 she's crazy. Like the, the way she articulates herself and the way she moves. So, so I imagine that someone like Anna requires a, a lot of time and a lot of face to face. I know that you give her that, but how have you given her that face to face time? You know, con- unconditional love. So she's, so she's ended up the way she has ended up, and still built hundreds of million dollars in brand value on the other side of it. How have you done that? I think I include Anna in what I do. So like I include my kids as, as much as I can in what I do. But again, like, I think it comes down to like having help. I know you want me to say like, you know, I do this or I do that, but it's like at the end of the day, I've had the opportunity to be able to have people help me in a way that they would look after Anna or they would look after Anna on a, on a set. And then I'm able to do what I do best. But like having my kids close to me is so important. Like I would hate, and I know this is so many people, I would hate to have that job where I'm, I've left the house by six o'clock in the morning and I get back six o'clock at night and I only get that one hour with my kids. Like what I do gives me the opportunity to be able to spend so much time. Jay and I are with the kids all day, every day, but also working, which is great. Yeah. I know you, you knew each other for a long time before, but how much did the dynamic of the relationship change in so obviously then you, you're dating, how much did that change your life and, and change your life? my life. I literally just said, oh, Jay's in the room. And I said to Jay the other the last night, I said, you've literally changed my whole life in like the best way possible. The most, like the most I've ever laughed, the most fun I've ever had, the happiest I've ever been. Like when it, I always say like, cause I used to laugh at people when they used to say, you know, your partner should be your best friend. I'm like, oh. Sounds so your cliche. Partner, yeah. Your partner's partner and your best friend is your best friend. Like my best friend is Lani. Like that's my best friend. And um, now that I have Jay, I'm like, he's truly is my best friend. Like when something good happens, I want to ring Jay. Like if I want to go somewhere, I'm going with Jay. Like if someone offers me something, but Jay offers me something, like I'm choosing Jay. It's like literally is my favorite person. Do you think though that everyone's relationship should be like that and everyone should feel the way that you feel about it? I hope everyone's relationship is like a nice relationship. What what would you what would your advice be to people that 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 don't feel that connected to their partner? Would you say that that is the is the wrong partner for them? I mean, 
like I don't want to be rude, but like, yeah, if you're look, these are my these are my you like like I said, those five set of morals that I had, like here is like my like it should be your best friend. It should be when something amazing happens, that should be the first person that you think of that you want to call. If you are thinking of like a holiday destination or a bucket list thing, like that should be the first person that you think that you want to bring with you. Like that should person should make you laugh like uncontrollably. That person should be someone that you can have hard conversations with, but you can also trust that you have good communication with. Like it, that should be your person. If that if you're hearing this and that is definitely not who you're with, there are plenty of other people in the world. There's a, there's a lot of um, successful women, especially in Australia, the UK, America, out there that have got businesses that are doing really well financially. Obviously, you're one of those women that's, that's, that's smashed life financially herself. Like, how hard do you do you understand that it's more difficult for those women potentially to find a part that aligns with them on a financial standpoint as yes. well? And yes. how and how does how how does that dynamic like how do you negotiate and get around that dynamic? I think I think I have to look at Jay for this because I think that I'm very lucky when it comes to to Jay. Well, Jay has an incredible like so I'm very I'm in a very different position. Yeah. Jay has an incredible business himself and he does very well for himself. So I think that there he has no um he doesn't feel that energy where he feels that i'm but 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 but, but you understand for, asked, but, but, yeah for most for most other women yeah. i think I, I think that's more a question for you frankie like um would that would that feel threatening for you i i i, th- I, I, th- I, th- I think i i know that jay has smashed it in business himself and and, and he's doing well in in, in in what he's doing i'm just wanted I, I suppose I just wanted you to. There's a lot. Of, there's, there's going to be a lot of successful women that listen to this podcast that think, oh, you know, it's all right for Kayla, like she's managed to do this. But I'm, you know, I have ten law practices, or I have this, and I'm earning this much. Yeah, you're that, a boss. I, you, like, you're, you're a boss that's woman. Incredible. But how does a how does how does that boss woman that that feels like she's had this empowerment? How does she go and find the right person? You, it's. I don't want to say it's been easier, but like you, you've you've had an alignment. No. How do, how can a woman find that alignment? Essentially, what I'm saying. Oh my, this is the most difficult thing for me to answer. Like I don't feel like they're out seeking like a man. I feel like the, the their right partner will find them, and that will be a person who is not jealous, who is proud of them, who um like Jay sent me a message the other day, just like I'm so proud of you, such a boss. Like that's so nice. Like and I he, he, he I don't know how to answer that, Frankie. Like. I, I just don't feel like any any boss woman listening to this is not like oh how do I find a man? But 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 you like, but, but I'm telling you that, that, that there's more of them that think that than what you believe because because I've spoken to a lot of successful women who are struggling in that and they say. But why are you struggling? Because because the men that you attract are, are jealous and they're weak and and they can't. Why are we talking talk about men? We can talk about partners, but like they're jealous and they're weak and and they can't handle your success. Like you should find someone that is so proud of you that will be your your biggest fan the person that will stick by you through the hard times through because this is not just glam and driving around in ferraris like it's hard and like you have rough days and that person needs to be able to support you and be proud of you every step of the way like you will find that person a hundred percent but like if you're attracting if you're thinking i'm never gonna find anyone it's because people that you're attracting are just weak and jealous yeah but 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 on the business side of things because obviously now you've you you obviously went on to to, to sell sweat and now two, I think it's like two years has it been three two years, three yeah. three years now and and now you literally forty eight hours ago it's announced so you're you're buying it back mm. like everything that's happened in your trajectory like how much easier is that for you to facilitate with with by being aligned with the right partner for you as a as like as a business woman one thousand percent yeah because you're so happy in where you are in your relationship that and you feel so. Uh, love and fulfilled and you feel like and especially having Jack Jay and I having Jack's like our family feels whole and then the business is just something that like I love so much and the community is something that I love so much I just feel like I could not be happier right now no one jinxing but I feel so happy with what's going on in her life what made you decide to sell it at the time it seemed like the right idea at the time and it it was with i'm not gonna lie like there was there's when you when you're doing so well i, I don't want to i don't, don't want to say this wrong but like when you're doing well there's offers left right and center to either purchase you purchase your business purchase your um member base there's offers all the time at, at the time it was it felt like the right alignment and then this has been a hectic 
three years for everyone. COVID, businesses, everything has changed and trajectories of business and, and, and where businesses are going are in total opposite directions. And right now where Sweat needs to be is back with his founders because no one loves Sweat as much as me. And I used to think that when you like, so I was brought up in like, say like a suits world. So you, your idea of winning is you get a business, you grow the business, you sell the business, win. For me, again, you know that I'm not money driven. So you, you have a business, you grow the business, you love the business, you sell the business, you feel lost and lonely. Like you didn't get the win. So then you get the business back and you just feel like, you feel like your child's come back from like daycare or something. You're like, oh my God. Like, I feel so much better. That's a win for me. When my team wins, I win. When I win with a team, when I win with my community, when they're happy, I'm happy. I, th- I think the, the thing that I found the hardest to understand from my point of view at the time when you sold the business was the fact of like, do you have still got to be in the business doing your day to day? Your name still got to be attached to it. Or was there something in there? Obviously, we won't go into too much detail, but was there something in there that allowed you to should you have not bought the business back to divorce your name from it eventually or was it always going to be tied to the brand that would always be tied so like i guess that right now and like without saying much like in the last 40 hours i'm very happy and i feel that there's endless opportunities that i'm able to control in what i want to do with where i want it to go and and how i want it to look and how i want it to feel and what i want from my life and like i said like i feel so happy with like Jay and I, we're getting married in like a week and a half. Like I'm so excited. And then it's like the business and where it needs to be and where it, and where it should be and where it is going is the, the opportunities are endless. But when you sell, um, cause obviously there's, um, there's a guy in the UK who owns a massive chain of fitness brand called David Lloyd. And he is known for saying that the worst thing he ever did was sell David Lloyd's gym because his name is attached to the brand. I think it's great for you getting it back because I think, one of the worst things you could potentially do is sell your name attached to a business. It must have been hard over the three years for you to deal with the fact that your name's attached to something you cannot control and your brand is attached to something you can't control. So surely there's some like so there's some pain in that for you. As much as I think that 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 would be hard for anyone, like anyone in that position who has um, a, anything attached to their name with their name on it, where goes goes on to 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 lose the not not lose control but like yeah I guess lose control of, of the name I think it would be hard for anyone what I will say is that in the last 48 hours she's, she's back happy. she's back she's back. she's very happy so what is your plans then with with this now you now you've got your baby back now now it might, <laughs> now, now I've got my baby back now 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 now, now, you're, now you're now you're now you're a mother again for the third time because you got you got you you, you <laughs> take true, though, you, ta- right. you, you, ta- you take you're taking back a child that that's potentially grazed its knee and needs to have you know a plaster put on its knee and, and and put back to to how you want it to be because you haven't driven it for the last three years potentially so how are you how are you planning to do that and what are you plan to do with it differently to what you did before. Well, I think it came to a standstill, obviously, with with a with the sale, and then um, now that it's back, it's like it's literally. I need a like it's only been forty eight hours. I need a second to think about it. But like, it's back to back to what I was saying three years ago. I, you want it to grow. It's already global, but you want it to grow. You want more trainers. You want more categories. You want to delve into like better nutrition. You want to like a, a like a better nutrition section. You want to um, you can do endless things. You can do clothing. You can do you can partner with apps like um, menstrual tracking and, and things that women actually need. The opportunities, like I said, are endless for women um, and endless for this app. So I'm so excited for 2024 because I think it's going to look very different. And what what's your personal goals like this, the next 12 months? Obviously, you're getting married. That's exciting. But, you know, you must have set some personal goals that, you, you, that you're going to smash in your life. Oh, like this, me, I just want to meet the world again. Like again like the last three years have been the complete shutdown in terms of like travel and like i know that you think like you live you're living here and all over the world but we're in in australia we came to a massive standstill so i just want to go my 2024 goals is just go meet the world again go meet the community go do more boot camps go do more tours do things like this with you frankie hopefully we have another podcast in a couple of months um and i've got some more news for you but yeah it's just i just see a woman now who's in flow rather than a rig- the rigid one I met 
robotic the, one. The, the robotic one, yeah. So, so I've seen you come into yourself, your true self, your true. See, so you, you know, you're more you're more flowy these days. You know, you know, you, you're bantering me at the start of the podcast. You introduced this podcast because you never would have done that three years ago. You never. You're right. you, you, you're, you're different because you because I think I, you've become whole. Like I think would be a good terminology. Yeah, I think I think I think by finding your person, you've become whole, and that's allowed you to to communicate yourself in a, in an even better way, which I think is going to help you grow your businesses on all fronts. I just I just, I just want to say, like from me to you, having known you for 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 quite some time, I'm I'm proud of seeing that. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's quite quite a thing. Yeah. Frankie is not lying with this. He actually sent me. I won't play it for you, but he sent me a audio voice message thing saying something very quite similar. And it was really nice. I played it to Jane. Jane goes, "That's actually really nice." <laughs> yeah. Oh, off the podcast, he's uh, he's he's, he's shouting at. He's, 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 he's shaking. He's, 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 he's doing. He's doing the shake. He's doing the. He's doing the shaking hand emoji. Like he's like, yeah, mate, that's that was terrible. That was terrible. But no, I, on on a serious note, like, I'm 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 buzzed to see you achieving what you what you're doing and and, and and you know moving things forward. I mean, I would like to understand though, like what other than traveling the world and meeting more people, you that's that's an that's a very audacious goal, and oh, obviously. That's the best goal. It is the best goal, but there must be some specific specific things um, that you're trying to delve into and get going. Yeah, but like, ask me this in a couple of months, and then I can. can so, so you're like, there are things. But yeah, like, but, we, just... but we but we we're, we're capped on. We can't even talk about. Like, it. you are the first person I've spoken to since yeah. this has happened. I, I, I love I'll, how, give you, I'll give you that. Uh, this is just like this is this is like me and you talking, but with restraints. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> So I just want people to know like, I'm not being awkward here, but I'm re- I'm restrained on saying certain things. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've got I've got to move accordingly. You know, I mean? I've got I've got four people looking at me over my shoulder yeah, right now. I've got people staring. I've got right gun, I've got guns pointing on my head, and I'm trying I, <laughs> I'm trying to bring I'm trying to bring this thing. Please don't say that. You see, no, but I, I, did you you know you know when I when I told you years ago when I told you years ago that we were going to do this podcast, right? I said no. You 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 said no. You said no, which 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 you which you were in your right to say no, but I I I, I had a belief in me that that, that we'd end up on the podcast. You and did we, say that, yeah. We did, but but you didn't. <laughs> 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 you 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 stonewalled me for years. Like let's 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 just be honest about it. Like so how so how how why, why now why now? Frankie, honestly, I feel like you listened to what I said that day. And I'm like, I'm not on the podcast because you listen, but I just feel like your content was looked and felt a certain way. And I think that over the last few years, you've really come to what you want this to be, who you want to be. When I sat down with you that day, I was really impressed because there were some like serious things that you said, like, I want to be the best. I want to be the biggest podcast in the world. Like, I want to, I want to, I just want to have the best people. And you said like cool things. Like, I love learning. Like, I love hearing people's stories. Like every podcast that I do, like I learn something new and I really liked that. And I really appreciated that. And then I think it was just till now I've had the opportunity to actually do it. But I was excited because I was like, you really leveled up all your stuff and like the way that you speak and, and that you get involved more and you have because of all the podcasts that you've done and the people that you've spoken to, you have knowledge now that you give back to them. And I like the dynamic that you have with people. And I like that you do your research as well. Like, I like you call me a personal trainer. You didn't call me a fitness influencer. Like, I like that you know my story, but I also like that we're friends as well. And it's taken this long, but we can go have, we, we went and had dinner, but it's like, you know, yeah, no, I just like that. No, no, I, I, I do appreciate it. And I, and I actually appreciate all the advice you've given me. It's one of the key things I learned from you was about alignments of, of, of people like in terms of like you've got to be as a, as a podcaster when you're trying to present yourself to the world in a certain way and you have to carry you ca- you have to carry yourself a certain way to get to a certain level and what you presented to me was a clear indication whereas if I kept presenting myself in a certain way in a certain light with a with a certain caliber of, of people that if I if I did that that wouldn't align to the level that I was getting to and I thought that was a very very like you put it in a more more elegant way than I've just put it there but yeah I like, don't want I don't want to I'm it, not saying anything about the people that that Frankie has had on his podcast. I think you're all amazing. It was just, yeah. It, no, no, no. It wasn't. It, it wasn't about that. It was just about. It was just about alignment and strategy and and everything like that. It wasn't about particularly about people. I've 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 probably murdered the explanation. But the way that you articulated it at the time really, really, really landed with me. I, and I look to be one percent better every day, one percent better because of what you said to me. And and it it just it just 
fucking punch me right between the eyeballs. <laughs> but but other than that swear word, I've got better at not swearing at every second word as well. So, so I've coached myself on that because you said to me as well, you know, when you're doing this kind of stuff, when you present yourself to the world, you've got to articulate, articulate yourself for me. So there's so many underlying lessons that I never thought I was going to learn from you that I've actually had. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. I appreciate that. The, the, the ability. Now, obviously, you're over here for Dubai Active. You're you're presenting um, a fitness type. Give me no, a... I'm, actually, oh, I'm doing a meet and greet on Saturday and then or, and a Q&A. And then on Sunday, I'm doing the boot camp, which is going to be epic. Because yeah. I've done a boot camp in here since, what, 2019? Yeah, 2019 was the first time you were yeah. here, right? Yeah. So what's changing in regards to what you Is it just like on another level bigger? No, well, like it's just a back. Like it's, just, it's just what? It's just another boot camp. Like it's just, it's just my twenty. I guess it's like the start of the twenty twenty four boot camps, and it's like kicking off with Dubai, which is going to be awesome. And then where's next from there? Oh look, that's another like that's a that's a, the you know, people that are staring at you. That's a they them going. Like, I want to say where I'm going, but then I'll just give it away, and then everyone's going to freak out. What if I don't go there? I, and I feel like this is my most ever contained podcast with what I can say, what I can't say. I feel like. <laughs> but what if I'm like the next place is blah? And yeah, like, yeah. It happens, and I can't make it to blah. And then they're yeah, going to get all angry at me. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, I I agree. Here so. are the places that I want to go. Okay, okay go. I want to go. Go. I want to go to Mexico. I want to go to Japan. I want to go to London. I want to go to Germany. I want to go to Greece next year. These are all the places I just want to go next year. I want to come back to Dubai. Um, yeah, that's that's my places. And and you mentioned other products and services being brought into the Sweat brand. I mean, so have I you love that. have you got plans for clothing? Plans for like fitness equipment and other stuff like that? Are there plans for that that we can talk about? My response to that is, I would love clothing, and I would love to partner with brands within sweat like if you're listening to this right now and you are a brand that aligns with women i would love to hear so how is how has it changed from now because obviously as kayla had seen as you wouldn't partner with brands in certain respects because well hey hold on if they are like say so one of the brands i'm just gonna like call out a brand that i absolutely love like it's an app that i absolutely love and this is a shout out to you and this isn't saying that you are going to be like part of sweat but even though i would love it but like things like flow right so flow and you just put your glass on as i said that so flow again is a menstrual tracking app and it tells you like is very accurate to the pretty much the second that you're going to get your period and some women need that it'll be like you're ovulating now you're going to get your period now here are some fun facts about periods here's some fun facts about pregnancy here's some fun facts about this and that and blah 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 everything that you need to know and it's so valuable to women to know and understand these things to track them when they're training and like so something like that not that particular app i mean if you want to but like something similar <laughs> integrated into sweat i would love and that would be someone that i would love to partner with no i i, I think that that would be a great partnership so uh i'll i'll try yeah, to see it up. Hit them up you, you know, know I'm, I'm, I'm a man with a few connections maybe i'll have a little word you know maybe maybe i'll put maybe i'll put a word in. maybe i can get this signed over oh you like, <laughs> that is true you, you, she doubts me she doubts me she's <laughs> doubted me before but let's see you bring you you're here you're here aren't you? Oh, yeah. you you doubt you doubt me about getting you on the podcast but you but you, here you are he's right it, here's where we're at but honestly I want to give some actionable advice to women looking to send in business and potentially they know that they've got business within them, but potentially they're working a job. They don't enjoy it. What would your advice and guidance be to women that feel empowered to start a brand, to start a business, to start something, but, but haven't felt the confidence to do it yet? Oh, like, look, here are my things that I say to people, because like a lot of people start businesses because they think it's going to make them money. And the thing is, if you don't like the business that you're in and not passionate about your business, then you're not going to work on your business and therefore it's not going to make you the money. And it's most likely to fail. The first thing I would say to people is you have to be passionate about what you're doing. What you're doing, like if it's trendy, like right now, personal training, trendy, cool, love it. Looks like it makes a lot of money. Personal training, I just said this before, is so hard as a job. It is so hard on you and your body and you're waking up at five o'clock in the morning and you're going to sleep at 11 o'clock at night and you're training tra clients day after day and you are literally their emotional soundboard. You are their psychologist. You are their best friend. You are their everything in that hour and then it's next client. So like, unless you're willing to do that and you want to do that, don't. So like, be passionate. And then have the confidence. Go ask questions. Go speak to people that are better than you. Don't leave your pride and ego aside and go speak. To, like, if you're better than me at something, I would love to come to you and speak to you about how to set up a podcast room. 
I don't know how to set up a podcast. I, know, I love that. I love your information. Like, just go out and speak to people, have the confidence, and then just do it. Yeah. Even if it's side hustle, just do it. Get people on your side that, are, and also get a good team. And like, that doesn't, that can just be your friends. If you have people around you that are going to say, you're not going to make it, this is a silly idea, like, just stick to your work right now, blah, blah, blah. Get rid of them. Get a good team mm. around you. So it's, it's not just your your team, it's that you're also going into friends groups. Da, da, da. People, everyone around you should support you. What, what about though those people that, that have parents that put negative doubts in their mind that's, that, and they feel like they're held back by their parents? Because obviously, obviously you, you've not been held back by yours. Hold on, hold on. I love my mom and dad, but I and my grandparents, who I respect more than anyone, all I wish for is like my, I just, I just want them to love me like, and they love me so much. But like... I would hate to disappoint my family. I would hate to disappoint my grandparents. Like it would literally crush my soul. So when I told them that I was doing personal training in Greek, my bubble, which means grandpa, he said to me, personal training is in Greek, is for men. Are you a man? You're not a man. You can't lift weights. That's for men. Find something else to do. And I was like, he's like, that doesn't make you. And then so, and then I also said it to my parents. And then my mom said, listen, I love you. But that is not a sustainable career. What are you going to do when you're 70? Which is a perfect response for someone 15 years ago. At a Greek mother who was like, okay, listen, personal training's fun. You're in a gym. That's great. But like when you're 70, like what's going on? Like what's going to happen? So like I had that. And then I had to prove them wrong. So like to anyone who's hearing that from their parents, you can prove them wrong. They, they, they will, my dad was very, very surprised and so um that's chilled he's so chilled but he was like i just like he looked at me one day he's like you're making really good money you love what you do i was like yeah he's like he just goes good on you chicken walks out <laughs> <laughs> but he is he is like you you your dad's so chilled your mom just likes to cook for everyone and, and make sure they're all okay catered for your sister loves cooking that's like the best. Greeks in general love cooking and love a spread and if you go in if you step into a Greek house everyone's just trying to throw food at you from all angles yes. how have you kept yourself in the condition and bounced back from two pregnancies because people say it's easy for you but I know I know it's got to be a lot harder than what it looks from the outside and from social media how are you managing a Greek family <laughs> but, uh, a uh, Greek uh, family uh, but bl- blowing up on social media building this hundred million dollar business plus trying to trying to come back from these pregnancies and greek food on the table every day listen like like i've never and i'll be the first one to say this i've never had a bad relationship with food and that is a credit to my family who use food as a source of like celebration so anything that could happen it was my family was like let's eat let's do this like at the table together any friends that came over would sit at the table like like even Jay, like when Jay and I were best friends, Jay would like sneak into our family dinners. He'd just rock up and be like, I'm here. I want to eat. Like, and it was like fun and yeah, it's a celebration. So that's how I handled the Greek food. I loved it. Um, and it's Greek food is like, people act like it's, you're going to like pile it on. You're not like Greek food is like fish, meat, salads, bread, olive oil. I th- but, My team loves me saying Oliver. I've said it but, so many times. It's true. But it, but it, I like the way that you've allowed women to understand that you know food is to be enjoyed Absolutely. and not to demonise it. Absolutely. I think that's kind of the biggest thing that you've brought to the world, more so than the just helping people get in shape and the guides and the app. It's like allowing women of all ages and sizes to have a different relationship with food. Because I think there's a lot of other programs out there that call things sins and do this and the other and, and demonize certain foods and ha- make women have this poor relationship with food. And then when and then put them, they'll never, ever be able to grow from that because they're always fighting food. But you've, you've said, no, eat what you want in moderation with the right help, but also train hard and put and do it for 20 minutes a day. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I think I'm really lucky coming from Australia. Most trainers, if you're listening to this and you're a trainer in Australia, most trainers... Uh, like 99.9% of trainers will not demonize food at all. They're actually very good. We have a very good food culture in Australia. I think when you leave Australia and go into other cultures that maybe are a little bit behind, then you start hearing things like what you said. Like, I don't, I, that's foreign to me. Like, it's been a long time since I've heard someone say that, you know, food is a sin and this and that. Like, I, I don't hear it. I, I know you don't, we don't hear it as much these days, but like, I know that there's, um, from, from having a family 
and my mum's friends in England, for argument's sake, like a lot of those are doing this. Yeah, the older generation. They're, 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 yeah. they're, doing, they're doing that kind of stuff and they're talking to me about this. Oh, yeah, I've weighed in and I've done this sin food. And I'm like, you know, if, if they'd come across someone like you and that, that, that made them have a better relationship with food, how much better would their life be? Yeah. I just think it's all about your relationship with yourself and relationship with food. And I think that's what you've allowed women to do connect the relationship with themselves and the relationship with food and have it together. Absolutely. I'm, I mean, I'm glad I have the following that I have because it, it allows me to be able to educate women and show, at least just show women. Because I don't talk about specific food that I eat or that specific food that they should eat, but I'm just like, you know what, just have a healthy, balanced diet. Eat the meat, eat the bread. Oh, sorry. Eat the meat, eat the bread. Um, You know, have the olive oil. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> keep saying olive oil. Just, trip, but just, it's just, just enjoy life. Yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy what you're eating. Like, and, and don't feel like, don't feel, don't feel the guilt and don't, and don't try and work it off. Like, that's just. I mean, you know, we've got to the point in the podcast where normally I'd, I'd, I'd take you down other rabbit holes and we'd go into other things, but you know, our, my hands are so, are so tired because of oh, things. things so did, 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 <laughs> ask me, listen, Frank didn't know anything that's going on 48 hours ago so you obviously have questions prepared do you i i, I have some some things in me locker uh, i have some things in me locker i have some things in me locker but no i just want to if you were going to give like if you if you were to check out this world tomorrow and you just had to leave one empowerful impactful pearl of wisdom from keller it's seen as years on the planet with every member of this audience what would it be i would leave i would leave like words of wisdom things like you can lead with emotion. That's the first one. Like you don't have to be logical about everything. Another one is that no one is looking at you as close as you look at you. So you stand two foot away. You stand two centimeters away from a mirror and pluck your eyebrows. No one can see your eyebrows from a meter and a half away, two meters away from you. So no one is looking at you as much as you look at you. Everyone else is so focused on themselves. Again, they don't see what you see. So just live your absolute best life. Don't worry about the foods that you're eating. Don't feel guilty about the foods that you're eating. Eat foods that make you feel good. Use foods as in celebratory moments. So when you're having a good day or like you want to celebrate with your friends, go out and eat together and go out and drink together. Do, do that. But use food as a source of celebration. That it's okay to be softer. It's okay to be honest. It's okay to talk about the things that that you want to talk about without feeling like you're feeling you're going to be judged because a lot of time people don't say things because they're scared they're going to be judged by others I think I've noticed that when I just say things out loud like I said to you that day you need to stop focusing on this and start focusing on this you took it really well we're still friends like I just said what I need to say and being honest I think being honest with how you feel in that moment as well and when it comes to the gym no one no one, no one is looking at you. Everyone is looking at themselves and worried about if they're going to stuff up. So like just use the gym as your you type, put your headphones in and focus on you. I think that's what I would do. Oh, and then also just get a group of friends that support you and love you for you and get rid of everybody else that's bringing you down. And if you don't have the right partner, get a new one. I love it. And, uh, and I just want to finish with my, let me have my little. I love let, it. Let me have my little piece. Go on, let me have my little piece on there. It's, you know, you, you introduced my podcast, but I want to I just, I want to close it out with this, right? And this is from me to you, right? Yeah. I've watched you build a business over numerous years, sell it for hundreds of millions, buy it back, find the partner that you love, have two children, bring them up right, connect with your family on on a whole different level of being and always remain the same person regardless of how much money you've got even though you've done all of this in the world and I want everyone who listens to this podcast to take that away from this because I it mean it, it just I've known you for a long time and I've seen the whole involvement and for you to remain like that in this way I think that's a testimony to yourself and I think that's a testimony to what everyone could take away from this and I just want to thank you from from me to you as a, as a friend, Kelly Sinez. I really I really appreciate you coming on my podcast eventually and uh, and sending it for me. Cry a little bit. Yeah, and uh, I just yeah. No, honestly. And guys, do me a solid favor. Subscribe to this on every platform you listen to it. Share it with your friends. And I hope Kayla's story inspires you to take your life to the next level. Much love. <laughs> Much love. <laughs> What the? Guys, do me a solid favor. Drop a comment below this video and let us know who you want on the podcast next. Hey.